Good morning, everyone. We're here in beautiful Jerusalem today, beautiful weather. We're heading off to the Mount, uh, Mount Zion and the Mount of Olives today. So come with us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good and gracious God, on this beautiful day, the sun is shining. It is yourself. It is itself a gift to us. Uh, we ask you to bless us on pilgrimage this day. The place and why it's such a significant, important site. And we'll pray the mystery of the rosary there. And then... Well, we're all getting off our three beautiful buses here. We are at this, getting off our three beautiful buses here at the Garden of Gethsemane. And there is the Church of the Agony where we're gonna have mass. And there is the Kidron Valley down below and the walls, the Eastern walls of Jerusalem and the Golden Gate, right there is the Golden Gate. We're going up the Mount of Olives and there comes our group. <laughs> These are old trees, there's six of them that one and that one and several others that are over 2,000 years old that if they were had a mouth and ears and an eyes, they would tell you what they saw and heard when Jesus was suffering his agony here in the garden. Where's Janet? Right there. There's the Golden Gate. Here's our group under an olive tree where we're going to talk about this site and get everybody ready for Mass here. Look at this great group. They're still coming. Amir, I think the group is growing. Every day we're getting more and more. Coming into the Church of the Agony of Christ and touching that rock right there, which is the rock where Jesus sweat drops of blood. And there's the image of it. But today we're going to have Mass out in the garden among the trees. So we're all entering the garden and we're going to have Mass outside in the garden today, which is actually pretty cool. So here we are having mass outside in the Garden of Gethsemane. And here come the priests. Are you guys ready? Ding, 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 ding. said to Peter, so you could not keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again. May our offerings, O oh Father, be pleasing to you. Look upon the face of your consecrated one. Jesus, our Lord. We're just getting off the buses here on the top of the Mount of Olives, and we're going into Potter Noster. It says it right there, where Jesus taught his disciples to pray and where he ascended into heaven. According to what we know, as early as you know, the third and fourth century, the Christians marked a spot which a lot of people are in line to go down and see another cave. What? Yeah, I'm talking to them. Okay. So people go on the left hand side, there's a stairway that leads you down underneath those steps. There's a chapel. 
Palmer is talking to them now about the history of this church here at Pater Noster. Then I'm going to read Acts chapter 1 and discuss the ascension of Jesus. Here we have the Our Father in over 180 different languages all weaving around through the churches and hallways. So we're all entering the cave where Jesus taught the disciples to pray the Our Father and that's the cave right there. We were having dinner at our guide's house in Jordan with his family and his sister was there. She was 48 years old, never had any children during their 24 years of marriage. She went to St. Charbel's tomb in Lebanon and prayed and came home, got pregnant with twins, 48 years old, pregnant with twins. So I'm holding the four month old twins at their house for dinner. And so when I heard that story, oh, Charbel has to pray for our girls. We've stopped at the Ramat Rachel Hotel. It's a kibbutz here, Ramat Rachel Hotel. And since Hebrew is written backwards, there it is in Hebrew, Ramat Rachel Hotel. And here we're getting off the buses and going in for lunch. We're a bit here early, but that way we beat the crowds. Well, we're all in line here coming in for the buffet. Look at this, good choices here. Excellent food here at the Ramat Rachel. Schnitzel's my favorite. Uh, fresh coming out, look at that. And over there, over there is the salads and the drinks and desserts and everybody goes over there. For lunch, we're here 45 minutes early. They open for us and that's great for our group. Back to the buses after a great lunch. Bus three green. Bus two blue. Bus one red. And there's Ramses. And there's Shalom. <laughs> and here I'm getting on my bus. And there's our driver, David. You're not gonna drive, Philly, no way. No, I, I will. <laughs> and Jim's taking try. his notes. <laughs> Carol's double checking him. Now we're ready to go. So this is a beautiful view of Jerusalem. I'm going to give I'm going to give my talk here on the story of salvation from Adam and Eve until today. Zoom in a little bit. There's the Mount of Olives right there. There's the Kidron Valley. There's the Dome of the Rock, and there's the top of Mount Zion, right there. Our hotel's right over there, by the way, just in that direction. So that's what we're going to do now. When God told him that, it was not a command. In Hebrew, it was a request. Take your son, your only son, and I request that you offer him. Abraham could have said no and still not be in disobedience against God, which makes his willingness to obey even more poignant and powerful because God did not command it. He only requested it. In the Hebrew language, that's a request. So Abraham goes up and he offers his son. He takes his son in a sense, he's raised from the dead because he didn't have to go to die. And he took him back home to Hebron. And there he said, now my son needs a bride. So he finds a bride for his son. He takes his unnamed servant. We don't know the same servant's name. He takes 10 camels. He loads them full of gold and silver and riches. He's going now to find a bride. And whoever the bride is, she's going to get those 10 camels full of gifts. He goes all the way back to his own people in Haran where his brother stayed. He finds Rebecca. She wants to come back and marry. So he, the servant brings her back to the son, Isaac. He, they fall in love. It's very romantic. He falls in love with her. He weds her and it says he took her into his tent. Now the story of Abraham and his son and God and his son offering a sacrifice doesn't stop there because after God has his son sacrificed, he raises him from the dead and he takes him back home. And when he gets back to heaven, he says, my son needs a bride. And he sends the unnamed servant. The Holy Spirit does not have a name. He is holy and a spirit, but he does not have a name that we know. So God the Father sends his unnamed servant back to his own people here in Jerusalem with 10 camels full of spiritual gifts. The Holy Spirit gives gifts to whom he will. And when the bride says yes, she gets those gifts and he brings her back home to his tent. And the son loves his bride 
marries her and takes us, takes us into his tent. That's all going to happen in the book of Revelation, by the way, with the marriage feast of the Lamb. Isn't that exciting about the story of Abraham and Isaac? We're now in the church of Dormition, where Mary fell asleep, and Amr's explaining this place. We're in the church of Dormition, playing, praying the last two glorious Amen. mysteries. This marks the place where Mary fell asleep. Amer explaining the upper room. Because they were fishing up there in Galilee, they thought that they were done, and Jesus said, see, you can't catch anything anymore. Go back, go back to the upper room, we're not done. And they come back. And the blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary. Just came up the stairs there with the entry. We're now entering the upper room. Right through those doors. Sign the room of the Last Supper. And right over there is the doorway. There is the there's the Church of Dormition, where we just came from, the Dormition of Mary. We're now walking into the upper room, and here it is. Here's the upper room. This is where four sacraments associated here. And if it looks like a mosque, it's because it was turned into a mosque for a period of time. After we left the upper room, we went back to the Notre Dame Center, and then a bunch of our group, almost all of them, went here to the Holy Sepulchre, the very place where Jesus was crucified and rose from the dead. And this is the tomb as it is today. This is looking in the front door when there's not a lot of people there. And this is taking you inside the tomb where the cold, dead body of our Lord laid before it was risen from the dead. This is where they touched their rosaries and prayed. This is some pictures of our group. Almost all of them were there. They had the chance to go inside the tomb, touch their rosaries and pray. And now they can go home and say, I saw it myself, the tomb is empty. Came back to the Notre Dame again, had dinner, and everybody got to bed early. What a great and exciting day. Join us tomorrow.